Baby, if you can't win while you playing dirty candy birds, must be playing above board all the time. Guess what? Listen, didn't I tell y'all? Didn't I tell y'all? Didn't I tell y'all? Or rather, didn't we tell you that Candy and the Gang was a hit? If you haven't been watching my recaps, you need to get down with them. It's up on my YouTube channel right now. But y'all, 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 forget all that. But guess what? Speaking of Miss Candy Burrs, you know she just exposed Portia's butt in a new interview that everybody seemed to overlook. But baby, you know your girl be reading as much as she be talking mess. And we gonna recap the interview because, oh, she, ooh, 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 she exposed Portia. Let's get into it. Listen, I know a few of y'all going to doubt that I got the receipts. Just like last time when it increased last week and y'all were like, oh, that's a lie. I heard from many people. Shut up. Because I'm going to show y'all TV Deets, who has the Nielsen ratings, showing a 50% increase in her ratings. Y'all, you can say what you want. I see why Bravo was putting so much money behind it. Candy show is a hit. And now we getting the numbers to add up. Ain't it nice to see a, a, a show that actually actually moves up right without busting anybody over the head with a henny bottle that's right let's hear it for representation let me show y'all the tv deeds to receipts and then we go and get into candy expose a portia <laughs> it's a good tuesday bam listen the ratings for candy at the game for season one episode three point one eight demographic of uh, 18 to 49 that is the most highly sought after demographic and it had 623,000 600,000 623,000 I swear I graduated high school y'all I swear 623,000 viewers down right this is either gonna make a lot of people happy because again it's nice to see some entertainment on reality tv with an all-black cast that's groundbreaking in my opinion because it is the first male-led and it's also lgbtq representative and proud and it's an all-black cast but guess what ain't nobody hitting anybody over the head with the henny bud bottle ain't nobody trying to fight anyone's mom nobody is lying scheming conniving putting on fake lives Everybody is real on this show. And low key, the show is entertaining. If you haven't watched my recap, make sure you go and check it out, right? Well, apparently, it's going to be a lot of people watching the recap. But I know, I know, I know that somebody's sitting there mad. I know the haters mad. Because again, there's been this narrative from a lot of people that the only time you can have a, a, a hit in reality TV is when you sell your soul. Now, I know what you're saying, girl, calm down. It's not a hit. It's only 623,000. That's true, but this is damn near a 50% ratings increase from episode one to three. And there's a lot more episodes to happen. And Real Housewives Atlanta hasn't even started. If Candy leads that, you and this is without attaching herself to a major show like Real Housewives of Atlanta and the only lead in she had was Salt Lake City and everybody knows Salt Lake City right now is the weakest Bravo show in ratings <laughs> besides Vanderpump Rules um that but Vanderpump Rules ruled for 20 years anyway y'all forget all this congratulations to Candy the gang and everyone involved let's talk about this interview so listen this article is directly from BuzzFeed News right it's Candy Burris was happy as a songwriter then Housewives came calling now in this article Candy talks about how she was songwriting how Derek Jane called her to be a part of Atlanta Housewives and how she was like oh I don't think I'm gonna fit in and Derek Jane was like well I'm gonna let them call you anyway and it talks about like all the bumps and heels that she went through to overcome with being listen read the article there's a lot in there but let me get straight to the mess because I know that's why y'all here let's jump to the part that's good okay so like i said it goes over candy's early life rehearsing in the house her bond with her mom it's a really good article if you're actually really interested in the foundation of candy and it gives you like rounds out like we know her as a boss but it rounds her out as a person it also talks about when she first showed up to housewives the first day of tape and she was crying it takes you through all of this stuff now here's the part where i was like girl she talked about portion but she actually goes in she says there are some people who really care what the public thinks of them and they'll do whatever they can do to change that narrative. Some people lie, some people get caught in their lies and some people don't. And I said, hmm, that sounds like she's talking about Portia. But I kept reading, cause I, but then Candy confirmed. And apparently the reviewer was thinking what I thought too. Cause she said, right? It started, it started when two castmates were annoyed at Burris. Portia Williams, who divorced, blah, 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 accused Burris of gossiping about her relationship with a former lover, right? And Phaedra Parks, blah, blah, blah. 
felt that Candy wasn't sympathetic enough during her tumultuous divorce and accused her of allegedly spreading stories about Phaedra dating as well. Candy just calls out Portia and says that Portia queer shamed her. It said if such shaming is one of the weapons used by castmates, queer shaming is another. Portia started claiming Candy was a lesbian, but without stating it to her face. Sorry, Marlo said out her mouth, I just want to know, you know, Candy, are you a lesbian? Now, y'all know I loved Marlo's 30 whisper, but y'all know I'll tease it every time I can. The interviewer goes further. Just listen to the setup because we get into the juice. They said Portia's faux innocent. Who said that? Reaction became one of the show's most iconic memes. But Candy wasn't amused because she said Portia made out with her at the club. Now get this tea. The interviewer said as we spoke, she recalled that it was her social media manager, Jamie Ziegler, who also was at the shoot, who reminded her that Williams had texted her after that makeout section. But Candy literally said, damn, I didn't realize phones could hold text that long. That's right. Jamie came out and said, first of all, Candy said she was a liar and that she was the one that accused. And, and Jamie said, but I got the receipts because Portia texted me after that night and told me what happened and what happened lined up with exactly what Candy said. And if we know, I know a lot of people never quite believe that. But again, they got receipts. And if you think about it, even in Portia, in her depths of hell line that she'd be doing, she never actually called Candy a liar about that. She just made up another lie. But it's not over. Candy spills more tea. The interviewer pulled up more receipts and said, during a meetup at the restaurant captured on camera, Candy confronted Portia. And Candy said, you said you wanted to eat my mm-mm until I mm, right? And then, uh... Portia being her ever loved. Now that we saw Portia Families Matter, it's easy the way now we can look back and see all her lies, right? She said, I'm not into key cups, short and stout, B. Portia retorted. You know Portia practiced that and rehearsed that because one thing I know about Portia, she is not quick thinking on her feet with those retorts, right? And listen, but then later, Portia backtracked and admitted something might have happened but blamed it on the Hennessy. Listen to the setup. They said, most importantly, interviewer then drop jumps to that part we all realized he said most importantly in a scene that's seemingly been scrubbed out of existence online Portia alleged that someone told her that Candy and her husband wanted to take her home drug and are her right now at first Candy said she laughed it off but then she said it turned to stop she said because it was happening at the moment of me too and it just changed the conversation around to allegations of sexual assault and misconduct right she said the top co the controversy took over the whole season and Candy was inundated, inundated with DMs and social media backlash calling her hashtag Bill Cosby. She said, I really did call the network. And she said, y'all, this is not cool. You're going to let this girl say this about me? The network came back with like, girl, ain't nobody going to literally told her, oh, the viewers aren't going to believe that. Here's the thing. Viewers were confused as to who started the rumor and riveted by the drama unfolding right up to the 2017 historic four-part reunion where Portia finally revealed that Phaedra was the one that made up the allegation. Candy talks about when Phaedra pointed the finger at Carlos King, right? However, Phaedra literally was called out by Candy as a bold-faced liar. Candy literally says about Carlos King, listen, he's done a lot of things that piss me off, but, but that right there, I don't believe he ever told her that. As a matter of fact, Candy said that she was literally devastated and was ready to create, uh, quit the housewives. She said, I remember I just cried. Now, ultimately, Phaedra left. For Bravo's record, Bravo stayed mom and they would not even tell this reporter why Phaedra left, why she was fired, or when Phaedra exactly exited. Candy also, hold on, we get back to the Phaser mess, but I just want to say this, right? Candy also touched on Nene Leakes and Mariah Cut, saying Nene Leakes called for a boycott of Bravo. Now, both Nene Leakes and Mariah Huck from Married to Medicine lobbed allegation that the network use of black women in front of the scenes did not end up with equality behind the scenes. As we know, I don't know what happened with Nene. I don't even know if Nene ever fought the case, but Mariah still is going at it. I've heard they settled, but everybody said Mariah had a fantastic case, emails, all this stuff, right? Candy did say, I did a whole letter to the network telling them that I wanted to see more diversity in executive leadership, basically telling them to hire more black owned production companies and just to make sure there's more diversity. And it was heard and they did start implementing some of the things I asked for. And that's right. I know Candy, I'm sorry, Portia and Nini, 
turned it into a circus and wanted to make it seem about their egos and that stupid check to Black Lives Matter that Portia just wanted so she could look like advocate of the year. But guess what? So that was an interesting aside that the fact that they tried to act like Candy only wanted her things were literally Candy asked for the money and she asked for the bag. And guess what? Bravo implemented both because Black Lives Matter got a check and they instituted these systematic changes that Candy wants. But that's why Candy's a boss. And listen, you can say a lot of things about Candy Burris. I know you guys do. But one thing that I will say about Candy is she fights for her people and everybody that looks like her. And it also gives us new insight into Portia's faux reality show. Those are Portia Williams shorts, not mine. She said it's all for entertainment and it's all fake. Anyway, they said it's been reported that contracts at Bravo have become more and more specific about the kind of dramatic labor required to stay on the shows. Now, Bravo didn't comment on this cast. Um, contracts, but it's been rumored that newer castmates, c castmates could potentially get the cut of episodes and paychecks if they don't have compelling storylines. Candy sees these clauses as security for the network. She says, for people who try to skate by and not try to share their lives, if you knew they cut your butt out of an episode and you wanted that coin, you'd be like, let me go and show them, right? This is my boyfriend over here, y'all. However, the interviewer made the same connection I did. Is that what happened with Kip Portia? Because Portia's biggest criticism of her castmates was that she was fake, new storylines, and walked out of scenes all the time. What? The interviewer picked it up in it too. I wonder who the interviewer was. And said, the economics of this kind of drama have created problems in the Bravo franchises because some castmates have wanted to save their biggest drama and best content for their own shows. On Atlanta... Portia generated massive, massive social media backlash. She ruined herself for that broke man literally taking her on a vacation once every six months and to boring places, girl. Listen, I need to figure someplace good. He's so, oh, you know what? Let me stop. We're not going to turn this into a dragging. Let's stay focused, right? Because there's some good tea in here, right? Um, they said uh, when she started dating Fallon's husband, but it never played out on the show, which she exited last season. Instead, she saved it for her own Bravo spinoff, Portia Family Matter. Candy says there are a lot of times like on our show where she would pretend like something didn't happen and didn't want to talk about it on camera or whatever i thought it showed you a lot of her show dot 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 you got to see oh no she's actually dot 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 and then candy finished it off by laughing without finishing her thought she might have been alluding to the way williams did portia's depiction of the show from attacking her ex-fiance to her seemingly coldness toward her cousin has literally ruined her with a lot of fans you know Candy Boris is always a diplomat. And you know she don't never get into the mud. But I will, because that's what I do for a living. Candy is conquering the world. I'm going to... So, le so let me fit paraphrase. Candy basically said Portia ain't never been nothing but a lie. And Candy's saying what a lot of people behind the scenes has been saying. Who you saw on Portia's Family Matters, loved or hated, was the real Portia. And the messed up thing is... If Portia had just leaned into the villain role, if Portia had just stood ten toes down and showed her real life, listen, you be recycling outfits. You don't got money like that. Your man don't got money like that. You don't got any friends. You never invited anywhere, partially because you can't be trusted. Other half is because you sleep with everybody's men. This is all alleged, but I'm giving y'all the greatest hits of things that I've heard. Make up your own mind. I'm not saying I'm fact, but make up your own mind. The fact that you got a new storyline every season, the fact that you keep running, 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 trying to hide from your true desires, you know, what you truly like, who you truly like, the gender you truly like, this is all alleged, right? Her being an aggressive lesbian, a part-time lesbian, having a, listen, all those things Portia keeps running away from. Her being maybe a narcissist, an actress, fake, literally just uses people, d d highly jealous, insecure, all those things. She had just stood 10 toes down and said, this is me. Y'all can hate me if I want, right? And if she had not been so violent and been throwing bows across the table, right? Had she not been there, then guess what? Portia could have had the life she wanted and the life she feels like she deserved. Because who am I to tell somebody what they deserve and don't deserve? Girl, you deserve whatever you can get. Portia could have had the life she wanted and the life she thinks she deserves on her own with her own coin her own fan base her own everything instead because Portia's a little fuzzy in the brain she went to her base root nature which is in my opinion to connive to connive lie steal and end up with that prize that she convinced herself that she is in love with some 70 year old con man in my opinion that's the way i see who literally 
don't got money for much, but the one thing he do got money for is to move your butt out as soon as he's done with you. Y'all keep an eye on that. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. How do you feel about fi Candy finally, in her most diplomatic way, confirming everything that we knew about Portia and also saying that Portia ain't nothing but and ain't never gonna be anything but all smoke and mirrors. But again, this is why Portia is reality TV gold and she can just be herself because we all know, if anything, everybody love a villain. All right, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.